AI art treats the creative process like a calculator. Punch in a few prompts, an answer comes out with virtually no intellectual or creative effort. AI democratizes art for the lazy and unskilled. And it comes with a side of theft for good measure. AI steals directly from artists without compensation or credit. This criticism is not comparable to photography competing with painting or digital art competing with traditional art. This is not the same as electronic music competing with acoustic instruments or digital video replacing film. There's a nuanced conversation to be had about using AI as a tool to generate ideas and references. AI as an artistic tool has many possibilities, including streamlining more tedious processes that could be easily automated. The problem is that AI is trained using artists' work without their consent or knowledge. Artists haven't opted into this experiment that currently exploits their work for profit. The cons far outweigh whatever conveniences and shortcuts engineer-generated imagery appears to offer. AI doesn't just pose an economic and legal threat, but also an existential one where human artists become irrelevant. Imagine a world where all our movies, songs, books, visual art, and memories are AI generated. Do we want to live in that world? A world where creative projects are outsourced to AI algorithms. A world where it takes no imagination or practice to get better at our crafts. A world where individual styles and stories are replaced by the monolith of automatically generated art. Part of the fun of creating things is the process. We get inspired, struggle, learn, modify, doubt, discard, edit, and spend hours toiling in the mud before we reap a harvest. And sometimes we don't reap a harvest. Oftentimes we only get muddy with nothing to show for it. This struggle is what unites us. We babble before we can talk and scribble before we can draw. We get to share our stories and talk about the tools we used. We learn how to overcome obstacles and do better next time. AI art eliminates the human learning processes in favor of immediate gratification where the image is automatically generated by scraping the personal and copyrighted data from billions of unsuspecting artists. AI doesn't understand purpose, meaning, or context. AI takes the humanity out of art. Our creativity and intellectual capacity as a species will atrophy and disappear if we rely on AI to do the heavy lifting. If you don't use it, you lose it. This phrase applies as much to our brains as it does any muscle in the body. I don't want to live in a world where imagination is outsourced to AI. I hope to live in a world where calculators are used for math, not for making art. This was an opinion piece I wrote and posted on social media. Obviously, calculators can be used to make art. Fractal art relies on math and algorithms. Math, science, and art are more alike than they are different. After observing the arguments being put forth by AI enthusiasts, I have a lot more to say about this topic. Debates on controversial topics usually boil down to two opposing tribes repeating phrases, memes, and slogans from their team. The AI enthusiasts versus the artists. Who's right? Is there a middle ground that both sides are missing? And how do we get ourselves untangled from this web of chaos? It's really difficult to watch the onslaught of criticisms artists are receiving for simply criticizing AI art. Non-artists have decided that we're anti-technology or simply refusing to accept AI tools into our hearts with open arms. It's not that new tools are bad, it's more that we have the ability to recognize the difference between using a tool and being replaced. The art community has skin in the game. As AI art directly threatens the infrastructure of being employed or building a career out of artistic skills. It's interesting how automation isn't replacing ultra-wealthy CEOs, sociopathic politicians, or multi-level marketing scam artists. Automation always targets the most vulnerable people who need to be hired for their skills in order to survive. This topic directly impacts me and every working artist today. And more importantly, it greatly impacts the next generation of artists who are going to inherit a world where learning the skills to becoming an artist is no longer a viable career path. Careers aside, 
just learning art for all the other non-monetary reasons is less attractive when you can push a button and have an algorithm succeed for you. Learning any creative skill is hard, and the temptation to throw in the towel is going to be irresistible to undisciplined minds who have been conditioned to expect instant gratification. All jobs are going to become more and more automated. There's no stopping this. Automation itself isn't inherently harmful, but how we transition into an increasingly automated world needs to be carefully considered. Otherwise, millions are going to be displaced and severely hurt. Automation should be used to free us from menial labor and tasks that waste human potential. Automation shouldn't be used to replace our creative and critical thinking skills. Automation makes goods and services more readily available, but it also leaves more people without jobs than it does create new ones. The bottom line is profit. Corporations will do whatever they can to cut costs, and if that means displacing people, they will. The societal and environmental consequences of cutting costs appears to be irrelevant to the majority of CEOs based on the history of their decisions while building their empires, unless it causes enough of a PR issue to force a change. To be clear, I'm not saying it's bad to make money. It's very fashionable to criticize the rich among artsy communities, as if being financially successful is morally wrong, and being poor is by definition noble. How a person becomes wealthy matters. There's a difference between starting a company from scratch with humble beginnings and inheriting the monopoly board from birth, equipped with unlimited get-out-of-jail-free cards. There's a difference between living in abject poverty and being someone who abused their credit cards to the point of bankruptcy. The spectrum between rich and poor is always shifting and has many shades of gray. There's thousands of variables, from quality of education to having enough healthy food to eat to fuel one's developing brain to having an environment that allowed for deliberate practice to develop skills. There's countless random variables beyond our control that shape the outcome of our lives. AI technology will continue to widen the gap between the top and the bottom of the financial spectrum. Those dependent on working jobs for their main source of income will lose the most, and those who own the AI algorithms will inch closer to becoming the new trillionaire class. To reiterate, I'm not making an argument against technological advancement. There seems to be a need to clarify what one is not, just as much as there's a need to identify what one stands for. It seems like the false equivalence fallacy comes pre-programmed in the psyche of AI art evangelists. Every AI art criticism post from artists on social media has comment sections filled with insults and accusations that artists are acting like cavemen who don't want to use fire or use the wheel. They say AI art is the next tool for artists, and we should embrace this tool instead of rejecting it like how photographers were first rejected by the art community. I'm not talking about cameras. I'm not talking about computers. I'm not talking about advancements in technology that make our lives easier. I'm specifically talking about the current iteration of AI art that was built on stolen art without consent from the artists or compensation for illegally using their work. Being anti-AI art in the current form that steals is not the same as being anti-technology. You can be anti-AI art and still use modern technology to make art. You can dislike sushi, but still like food in general. Being anti-sushi is not the same as being anti-food. AI can automate many processes, such as generating references and ideas if you're struggling with coming up with a starting point. Color grading and image upscaling can benefit from AI. In the context of animation, there's potential for creating real-time shaders, texture maps, and even automating the tedious process of in-betweening, which is where you create all the images in between key frames to make the motion smooth. There's countless legitimate uses for AI as a tool. The problem is that AI-generated art isn't designed as a tool, but as a replacement for living artists. AI is just a tool, is the common response from the uncritical. One has to be able to discern the difference between being given a tool and being given the boot. The buggy was a tool attached to a horse for transportation, but you don't see horses pulling trucks and cars. Horses didn't find new jobs when the automobiles replaced them. 
How AI Art Works Before critiquing the AI art trend further, I should first address how it works. I'm not an expert, so I'll be speaking in layman's terms based on my generic, basic understanding. Put very simply, AI art uses a text-based prompt as a guide to scrape a dataset of artists' work in order to generate a new image. Lion 5B presents a dataset of 5.85 billion clip-filtered image text pairings. This massive dataset includes private data and copyrighted data being used for commercial purposes without consent. Stable diffusion is trained on a specific dataset. This data set is made out of billions of copyrighted images from artists' work. We as artists had no ability to protect our intellectual property or consent to having our work used in these data sets. Artists are not being protected, compensated, or consenting to being used as guinea pigs in this AI experiment, which is a direct violation of copyright and intellectual property laws. Once an AI is trained on a model set, it can't easily unlearn that model. Artists have had their data entered without permission. To remove data from a database, an artist would first have to know their work was being used, have the technical knowledge and ability to search a database to locate their data, and then attempt to opt out. Automatic opt-in to AI datasets shouldn't be the default setting we find ourselves in. It should be harder to opt-in than to opt-out, especially given the wide-ranging consequences of unauthorized image reproduction. As AI gets better and better at replicating any specific artist's work, it will more easily lead to the destruction of careers, identity theft, and damaging reputations. Of course, any human artist can do these things, but the art community doesn't support this type of behavior, making it very difficult to sustain a professional career doing creative work if one is known for tracing, plagiarizing, or otherwise knowingly reusing other creatives' work for profit without permission. AI doesn't play by our rules. The technology is evolving far more quickly than our dinosaur age economic and legal models can keep up with. We aren't even in an arms race with AI. We're in a slaughterhouse. These AI systems are in their infancy. However grotesque and uncanny the offerings appear at the moment is beside the point. The rate at which AI-generated imagery is improving is alarming. We've already gotten to the point where the more refined AI imagery can fool the average viewer into thinking no AI was used in the image's creation. Unless there's hands in the image. AI seems to struggle with hands just as much as we do. Poor ability to make hands aside, magazine publications have already started experimenting with outsourcing their content to AI. Every time we engage with AI, we're feeding it value-based information about what we like or dislike in an image. Every click of the mouse gives the AI important lessons in relevant keywords, stylistic preferences, rendering processes, color and tone combinations, and all the details that interest us. This teaches the AI how to improve its success rate in generating visuals that most humans find aesthetically pleasing. AI evangelists will preach that AI is simply a tool and we are its masters. But in fact, we are the tools being used by AI to improve its own processes. AI is using us, and it won't need us forever. The companies and CEOs who are invested in AI won't need us forever either. There's no reason to keep an AI program open source forever when it can be sold to the likes of Google or Facebook for billions of dollars. If there are paid versions made available, the free-to-play versions will pale in comparison. We think it's free now, but we're already pouring priceless data into these systems every time we use them. Is AI art real art? There's an argument over whether AI art even deserves to be called art, since it's not being generated by a human. It might be more appropriate to call it engineer-generated art. The question, is this art? Is an old one? And the answer is usually yes. Are photographs art? Are comic books art? Are video games art? To the older generation, the answer at first is almost always no. Or at the very least, the new art form is considered lowbrow entertainment. 
Eventually, every new medium evolves and matures to the point of being accepted as a form of creative expression by the general public. So, can anything be art? At a certain point, this question is one of semantics. The postmodern art movement already answered this question. Anything can be art, depending on its conceptual framing. For better or worse, this movement has broadened the definition of art to extend beyond skill-based processes of art making. Put a picture frame around a pebble, and it's art. Put a toilet in a gallery, and say it has something to do with the human condition, and some art collector will see droppings of genius in the bowl. So I'm fine with the idea that AI art is art. These images are generated from the DNA of other artists' work. So how could an AI image be anything other than a work of art? The real point of contention is whether or not the person using the AI systems to generate art is an artist. It's here where I would argue AI artists aren't really artists, they're clients. You can't make AI art. AI makes the art for you as its client. If you don't play sports, you're not an athlete. If you don't take photographs, you're not a photographer. If you don't tell stories, you're not a storyteller. If you don't make art, you're not an artist. The magic of words. The only input AI requires from the user is a written prompt. But a person won't always be needed to provide written prompts. If you reduce the creative process down to a text-based request, you're just asking a genie to grant you a wish. If you ask a chef to make you a meal, you aren't a chef just because you provided the prompt. You're the customer. There's nothing special about coming up with a series of words that act as a request to be turned into a product. This is what a client does. The client can't claim to be the author of the artist's work. If you ask a musician to write you a three-minute song with lyrics about young love and heartbreak, sung in a soft voice and played on the acoustic guitar, you can't claim to be the musician just because you came up with the written prompt. Ideas are a dime a dozen. There's already AI artists who are trying to copyright their written prompts. The irony of attempting to copyright a prompt that is designed to steal other people's copyrighted material is almost incomprehensibly absurd. There's nothing special about a prompt. Text-based prompts have the potential to run on autopilot. A person isn't necessary to feed the AI written prompts, as the AI is just as adept at generating automatic text as it is images. The game changer will be when AI understands concepts like purpose and intention. AI will eventually be able to react in real time to the cultural pulse of the internet, making timely and relevant work that connects with us on an individual level. There's already AI text programs that are nearing college-level writing ability. If professors can't tell the difference between an essay written by a student or chat GPT, then coming up with a text-based prompt won't be an obstacle for AI. New creative processes aren't being created by AI. They're being eliminated. The end goal is to erase any need for human input whatsoever. When AI art is better than human art, as AI-produced media improves, we might actually prefer what it makes to human-made art. Now I'm talking about art in the broad sense to refer to all creative activities. There's no reason AI won't be able to learn what we like based on critical feedback, much like a human artist adapts their craft in response to feedback. AI will continue improving its processes to make creative works that fit our brain chemistry like puzzle pieces. Don't like this sad lyric in a song? AI tweaks the verse to more closely match what's going on in your life. Oxytocin levels rise, a kick of dopamine in anticipation of the epic final chorus, we listen longer, we listen more often. The song changes a bit each time as it learns to modify itself to our individual taste and brain chemistry. Technology molds our neurobiology. Social media already does this by exploiting our short attention spans to collect data and observe how we interact with posts. The posts that cause an emotional reaction be it negative or positive, cause us to comment or look at the post longer. This sends signals to the algorithm telling it to show us related content that will provoke a similar response in us. The goal is to capture our limited attention in order to show and sell us more ads. 
On the one hand, the collection of our data by advertisers helps ensure we aren't constantly bombarded with irrelevant ads. If you're an edgy 21-year-old whose sole passion in life is metal music, it doesn't make sense to get ads intended for middle-aged mothers interested in cute coloring books. It's spooky to have a conversation with a friend about needing to buy a new couch, and then see ads about couches on Facebook immediately after. Nobody likes ads. However, targeted ads seem preferable to completely random ones. Sometimes you really do need a new couch. But one consequence of social media algorithms catering to our behavior is the creation of information echo chambers, where our most extreme biases can be confirmed. Confirmation bias feels good. It feels good to feel right, even when we might be wrong. And social media knows it's more lucrative to keep people enraged and engaged than uninterested. Emotion sells and the shrewdest companies know how to monetize our most primal feelings. What can artists do about AI? To any problem, there has to be solutions. One idea being tossed around is data unions, where as an artist, you can voluntarily opt in to submit your art into a data pool in order to receive royalties whenever your assets are used. Similar to how the music industry has systems in place to compensate and protect musicians when their music is played or sampled. Artists on ArtStation have boycotted AI art by flooding the site with anti-AI art protest images and hiding their work when ArtStation refused to address AI stealing artwork from portfolios on the site. The Concept Art Association has set up campaigns to protect the rights of artists from AI technologies. One positive spin on the threat of AI is the fact that it's caused the art community to come together on a massive scale. This is a community that's otherwise divided into many subcultures and isolated like stray cats. AI is here to stay, and it's going to impact every aspect of our lives as it continues to advance. Artists are taking a lot of heat, being called whiny, or anti-technology by the monolith of uncreative and unethical opportunists. But we shouldn't be afraid to stick up for ourselves. It takes guts to make something and put it out into the world. And it's not right for bottom feeders to sneak in and flip a profit off of our hard work. Pandora's box has been opened. How we choose to react and engage with its contents is still within our control.